and welcome back. We are working on section 6.3 today, improper integrals. We're gonna try to tackle this first learning objective. So evaluate improper integrals with infinite limits of integration, uh, although that's a little bit disingenuous because we're gonna do an example that's applied. So, all right, we'll just pretend like we're tackling that in the next video. So the most common kind of improper integral, and there are a variety of types mathematically, but the, the one that seems most pertinent to us for, for business and economics purposes is the one in which we run into an interval where we have one kind of normal limit of integration like this, and the other limit of integration we're labeling as infinity. Um, sometimes I'll just be lazy and write just infinity instead of plus infinity, but the assumption is it's the positive one, unless you see a negative sign there. And the definition for this, we need a definition, first of all, because infinity isn't a real number. So our, our definite integral is only defined if this was like a and b, where a and b are real numbers. Infinity doesn't fall in that category. So what we mean by this is we say, okay, well, what I, what I really mean is do this definite integral, but let's see what happens as this upper limit kept getting bigger and bigger. So not from a computational perspective, but conceptually, we can imagine doing this integral for some value of n, making n a little bit bigger, doing this again, making n a little bit bigger, doing this again, and then again and again and again, and trying to observe that behavior. Practically, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So what we're going to do is evaluate this integral just with this letter n there, and then use our limit skills back from chapter one to figure out what is that, that uh, uh, function trend toward as n gets bigger and bigger. So the pieces of terminology that go along with this, if, if the limit exists, then we, it's said to converge. So if we get it's just some interesting real number out of this limit, then we say this, this uh, improper integral converges to that number. Um, if the limit doesn't exist, either through uh, some crazy thing happening uh, where n goes to infinity, or if it goes to positive or negative infinity, the actual value of the limit, then we would say that this integral diverges. Remember, a limit being equal to infinity is just a way, another handy way of saying that the limit doesn't exist, just in a useful kind of capacity. So one quick one just to get us started. So our, we're taking the integral uh, from, of 3 over x from 0 to, and you'll notice I got lazy right away, <laughs> positive infinity, um, even though there's no plus there. Um, we're going to say this diverges because what we'll do is we'll actually treat this uh, integral like we do normally. We'll do our, our fundamental theorem of calculus stuff on it. So 3 over x turns into... Uh, if we're being really good, this is absolute value of x, but you'll notice none of these numbers could be negative, so there's no risk of us plugging a negative value in for x. Um, and so we're just using the definition of that improper integral. Well, the, the letter doesn't matter. We're using capital N just because often mathematicians will use capital N for a number that gets really big. Uh, but capital N goes to infinity uh, in the worst kid's book ever. Um, and then uh, we'll see what that limit actually looks like once we do our little plug and chug kind of deal. So we, we literally plug in capital N, we plug in two. This is some fixed real number, so now all the excitement is, is pending right here, uh, and that we're gonna say, look, as N gets bigger and bigger, what happens to the natural log of N? Well, bad news, it keeps getting bigger and bigger as well. It's slowly, but in, there's no ceiling to natural log of N as N gets bigger. So this limit itself is infinity. It's not a concrete real number. So uh, that's why we would say that this integral diverges. So anytime we get an infinite limit or some other interesting way that the limit doesn't exist, we say it diverges. So let's take one application here. Uh, so we're gonna consider population on an island and notice we're not given the population itself. We're given a rate of change in the population. So P prime of T and uh, this is in thousands of individuals per year, so it is a rate. I guess I need to keep track of that thousand piece here. And then T is measured in years after 2000, presumably the beginning of the year 2000. <clears throat> Our task is to compute and interpret these two integrals. One, which should look pretty familiar given what we've been up to lately, and the other that's new to this section. So first one, we've been doing this for a little bit, so we'll, let's jump right in. We'll replace P prime with the actual expression for P prime that was given to us. We didn't have to do any modeling here. We didn't have to translate words into formulas, so that's convenient. Uh, and then we do our normal integral stuff. So integral of e to the kt looks like one over k, e to the kt. That's gonna get evaluated for between zero and one. 
and we'll do our normal deal, plug stuff in, bing bada boom, and we get 0 0.961. If you've forgotten the units, this may look weird. It's like, what, one person? But remember that P prime of T was in thousands of people. And so that's going to mean that uh, 0.961,000 is really more like 961. So we're moving the decimal place over three spots in order to get how many individuals there actually were. Um, and that's over the course of the first year because t went from 0 to t equals 1. So from start to one year later. So the other integral is the more uh, what timely one, the one that we were focusing on this section. Uh, but it, it goes down the same way. Basically, we're evaluating this integral by using the p prime formula they gave us. And then everything else is the same, except uh, so, so we still get the 1 over k, e to the kt. But now we can't really evaluate at infinity. So what we really mean is, look, pick a number for this top thing and then see what happens as that number gets bigger and bigger. So we'll first uh, actually plug in our top and bottom parts of this interval. So n goes in, 0 goes in. So the excitement is not in this second term. The e to the, this is going to be e to the 0. It's going to be some number. The more exciting thing is what happens to e to the negative 0.08n as n goes to infinity? Well, as n goes to infinity, this gets more and more negative. And then e to a giant negative number, as, as this keeps climbing, uh, as this keeps falling more and more negative, then this e to the uh, very large negative number gets closer to zero. Um, you might remember your basic e to the x um, graph. So as, as you go toward negative infinity, then this value, uh, the output, the height is getting closer and closer to zero. Which is actually pretty great because that's going to give us a nice concrete number for our answer. Remember, this is still in thousands because it was in thousands of, of uh, of individuals per year. That was the, those are the units on our p prime. So uh, we're going to end up with 12.5. So in other words, this is the projected growth in the island's population. I, I want to underline this uh, because we don't know the original population. We don't know what p naught was. So we can't say what the new population is actually going to be, but we can say how much we anticipate it growing by if this formula actually held. So this is kind of intriguing, right? It means that you can keep going on forever and ever and ever and ever, and uh, the growth according to this model will never grow to more than 12,500 individuals. So it slows down dramatically as you, as you go along, um, eventually not adding anything more than that. Okay, uh, so the last piece is a you try problem, and I'll give you a chance to pause and give this a shot before we jump in together. All right, I'm going to assume you paused and took a moment, and now we're coming back. So uh, we can kind of do two things at once here. Um, this integral is going to look like some kind of limit. I'm going to use the, again, the letter doesn't matter. We've been using capital N, so we might as well do that. Uh, but then uh, the interesting piece that we're going to do at the same time is to try to make sure we can actually manage this as an integral. So uh, a convenient rewrite for that would probably be to put it um, express this as x to the negative 2. Uh, we don't have a quotient rule analog uh, and unless you're going to use uh, integration by parts and reorganize stuff, but that's actually um, more trouble than it's worth here because we can really make this look like a power rule problem. So this is a constant times x to the negative 2. We'd have that constant would sit there. We'd have x would go up one power, so <laughs> less negative, and then divide by that new power, so we have a negative 6 in front. And then that's going from 3 to n. I'm going to leave this limit out here, uh, just like with derivative instructions. Until you actually figure out where this is pointing toward, that limit expression doesn't go away. So we're going to have negative 6 times n to the negative 1. We're going to be taking away, i got to be careful about that, negative 6, 3 to the negative 1. Uh, and then here's the moment of truth. So n goes to infinity. This piece is going to really be a fraction. It may not look like it. Remember, this is really the same thing as 1 over n. So as n gets bigger and bigger, you're going to divide by a larger and larger number, and that whole thing's going to head towards 0, which is fantastic news for our the sake of our convergence here. 
Um, so the limit as n goes to infinity is going to give us zero for this. That's what it's pointing toward. Negative negative makes positive six over three, basically six times three to the negative one. So ultimately we're going to get two. So if we looked at the graph of six over x squared, this is where this is where the mind starts getting kind of warped a little bit. So there's three. Infinity doesn't stop, right? So this says that if you look at all that area, it's exactly two. Isn't that crazy? So you, if, if this were a slide that you wanted to build, it, the slide itself is infinitely long. You would be sliding along this thing forever and ever and ever as you go to the right. But if you wanted to build the slide out of a concrete amount of material, you'd only need two units worth of material to do that. If that doesn't blow your mind, then man, you were better than some of the great mathematicians of our time because they had trouble dealing with this fact too. So there's a you try and that will complete this first video for the section. Be back for the second one next.